put a new one in, get it all set up, ready to go. But that's all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So as I was saying, we're going to be studying faith, the law of change. And we're going to Romans 3, 27 to 28. 3, 27 to 28. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So we see there that faith is a law. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The mirror translation says the law of faith cancels the law of works, which means there is suddenly nothing left for man to boast in. This leaves us with only one logical conclusion. Mankind is justified by faith and not by their ability to keep the law. Man is justified, just as if we never sinned, by faith. So we see there is a law of faith. Now, if there is a law, wherever there is a law, there are um, principles for that law to be enacted. There are certain things, if you um, have a driver's license and you're going to ride and drive on the highway, there were certain things you had to do, and there are certain laws you have to know about. One is when there is a speed limit posted. That means that's your limit. You have to know these various things pertaining. There are laws pertaining to driving, to having a driver's license. There are laws when you go shopping, when you park. The whole, the government sets out laws. There's laws and rules for filing your income tax. Well, to walk in faith, there are laws that govern faith and enable us to walk in faith and have change in our life. Faith, as a law, works all the time. Faith never fails. Jesus said to Peter, I pray that your faith fail not. But he didn't say the God kind of faith would fail. And in one of the favorite scriptures, Mark 11, 23 and 24, but in 22 it says, have faith in God. But in actuality, in the Greek, that means have the God kind of faith. To operate the way God operates. So faith as a law works all the time. When the principles pertaining to that law are kept and operated in. We don't just say faith and I'll do it my way how I want to do it my way. Something else is important. God does not respond to what we do. If we're walking in unbelief, crying and moaning, God doesn't hear us. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, and God hears the person walking by faith. God hears the language of faith. So what does that mean? We, God doesn't respond to us apart from faith, but when we're walking by faith, we're responding to what God has already done for us. And we'll go into that more, but God doesn't respond to us. We, we might have lack in our life, and we say, oh God, I'm so poor. He's not going to respond. Because God is a faith God, and he's not going to put himself in agreement with you and look down and go, oh, yeah, you're right, you are poor. You're done. You're done. And God has given man authority in the earth, and he will not usurp your authority. And if you make a decision you're poor, God is not going to interrupt you. The Holy Spirit will be there drawing you. He will send people across your path with the word of God. He will teach you, but he will not interrupt you and say, no, 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 no. So we're to respond to what God has done. This is faith, the law of change. So we have faith in what Jesus did for us. And that's an example of that if we look in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And in that chapter, it starts with telling us what we were like 
And then in verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith. By grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Notice how closely that relates to what Romans chapter 3, verses 27 and 28 say about boasting. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. For by grace, God's willingness to use his power on your behalf, even though we don't deserve it, Jesus died, rose, went to hell. He bore all our sicknesses, all our diseases. And by faith in the finished work of Calvary, the grace of God then executes the change. So without faith, we would have never become born again. We would have never been made the righteousness of God in Christ. We would have never become children of God. So how did all this work? The word of God was preached to us. We heard it. The Holy Spirit gave us revelation knowledge of it. We believed in our heart. It says if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Sozo, delivered, healed. Everything we need is in the faith and grace. So the faith comes from the word of God. We speak it out of our mouth, and the grace goes to work on our behalf. Which is why faith as a law works. When we believe in our heart, we speak out of our mouth, a change happens. That's a law. Without faith, we would have not been able to tap into the grace. Faith is really our part of getting the word in. And when we hear the word and we meditate it and we get it into our spirit man, the faith arises, revelation, knowledge arises, and now the grace of God is there to bring about whatever we need. Amen? Hallelujah. So faith is what connects you to the unlimited power of God. The faith that we have is in the word of God. The word of God itself is pregnant with faith. DNA is in a seed. And every seed, the word of God is seed, has within it the DNA to produce whatever that seed's meant to produce. Once it's planted, the soil cannot tell the seed what to produce. The seed in itself will tell the soil the nutrients it needs to produce. So you take the seed of healing and you plant it in your heart and you get revelation knowledge and that seed has got to bring forth health and healing. Because the DNA of health and healing is in that seed. And that's the law of faith. So now you get that, and you now have faith, and you now speak it, and you speak it so the grace of God can work on your behalf. In, um, you don't have to go there, but I'm going to read it from the uh, Mirror Translation. 2 Corinthians 3.18 shows our identification with Jesus. In the mirror it says, blue, we're, blueprint. we're a blueprint of God. Jesus is God's blueprint. Jesus is God's blueprint in human form. His image is mirrored in us. So if you want to know what you're supposed to be like, once you're born again, you're to make sure you can identify with Jesus. And that's where a lot of people stumble, saying, well, I'm not Jesus. There is only one Jesus. There is only one Lord and Savior, Jesus. But we are part of his body. And we are in the anointed one. When we were crucified with him, and he said, the works that I do shall you do also. 
And we are joint heirs with him. So on the inside of us, we're born again of the same incorruptible seed that God, that Jesus was born with. We have to identify not with Satan, but identify with Jesus. See, we can say, well, I can identify with lack, and I can identify with sickness, and I can identify with failure. When you're saying that, you are identifying with Satan, who is a fallen foe. We're either identifying with the work Satan did in Adam or the work God did in Jesus, who is the last Adam. And it's our choice what we're going to identify with. And we're to identify. Our identification is in Jesus. So do you want to know what you're really like? You look to Jesus. How do you find out what Jesus is like? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus and the Word are one. And if you want to see what you look like, if you want to know what you can do, look in the Word. If you want to know what God can do in and through you, look in the word. Because Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. You want to know what kind of works you're capable of doing? Find out what the works Jesus did. And we have to start identifying with that because unfortunately we too often identify with what Satan did in Adam. Because often it's easier So it says that we're changed into the same image from glory to glory. And in Colossians 3.10, the mirror says, We stand fully identified in the new creation, renewed in knowledge according to the pattern of the exact image of our creator. With knowledge, we will hook in because we have to reprogram our mind. So we have, 1 John 5, 13, it says that we have eternal life. Within us, eternal life. And I want us all to realize eternal life is not meaning we will never die. Every spirit will live forever. It will never die. Your home will either be with God forever or with Satan forever because a spirit never dies. And we talk about our spirit being dead, but our spirit was dead to God but alive to Satan. Our spirit was filled with darkness, and we needed a new spirit. But a spirit never dies, so when we were sinners, before we accepted Jesus, we still had a spirit because a spirit never ever dies because Jesus it was also said in Ezekiel I'll give you a heart of flesh I'll take out the stony heart if it's a stony heart that means it was dead but it's still there it's just not functioning with operating with God so eternal life means God's kind of life that word is zoe which means the God kind of life and when we got born again we got the God kind of life in us That God kind of life is in you. Say, God's life is in me. That's the life that's in you. You don't have to try and get it. You don't have to be good enough to get it. The moment you were born again, it's in you. It's in there. It's in here. But too often we're trying to get, and we're asking God to do things that he's already done. And we just have to, with faith, the law of change, tap into it. When you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, is that the moment he became Lord? No, he was Lord all along. But that's the moment you had him become your Lord. Amen? So we have within us the nature of God. And eternal life, I want you to remember, eternal life doesn't mean we're going to spend eternity in heaven. 
Eternal life is the nature of God that comes into our spirits. It recreates us, makes us new creatures in Christ, and makes us the righteousness of God in Christ. Now. Right now. And that's how we're to operate, right now. We're to operate in the God kind of faith, the God kind of nature, right now. And too often we think we're not going to get that until we get to heaven. We have it right now. We have God's nature within us right now. And it says he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That means right now. If he has done it, we have it right now. We've got to quit struggling and working and working and working to try and get the blessing of God. We've got to quit struggling and struggling and struggling to try and get healed. We've got to quit struggling and struggling and struggling to get delivered. Satan is a defeated foe. And as we said last week, the only way he can stop you is through deception. If he can get into your head and deceive you, he will stop you. Ephesians 5.1, we'll look at that. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Be ye therefore followers. That word followers in the Greek is actually to imitate, to mimic. So what's really being said there, be a mimic or an imitator of God. Imitate and walk in this life the way God walks. Do what God does. Well, you might say, I don't know what God does or how he walks. Well, number one, go to Genesis. And God said, and God said, and God said. And God said, and God said. And after six days of God saying, and God saying, and God saying, he said, I rest from all my work. What was the work God did? I mentioned this, I don't know if I said this last week or if I said it on Wednesday. What was the work God did? Saying. Saying. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Saying. We are to imitate God. We're to mimic the way he does things. How does he do things? By saying. By saying. The mirror translation says to mirror God. When, as, as the word that came forth earlier, it says that the people are going to see how great is their God when they see you. Because we're to mirror God. We are his offspring. The message translation says, watch what God does and then do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Well, you might say, I didn't have a parent to learn proper behavior from. Well, once you're born again, you do. You have your heavenly father. You might not know how to act. Open the word and you'll find out how to act. The Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct you and show you how to act every step of the way. So one, what God does more than anything is love you. Because he is love. So when you're in God, you're in love. But it says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And this is important, to be able to say, I am a child of love. If every seed produces after its own kind, then you are love. You have love. You are love. You're born of love. The love of God is shed abroad in your heart, your spirit. That's where you got born again. It's in there. You want to know how to act and walk in love? Watch Jesus. Find out what Jesus did. And God so loved that he gave. Love always gives. Always gives. Gives first. Love 
gives. We'll leave it there for now. So we are to act like him. We are to mirror him. This is a law of faith, a law of change. We want things to change in our life. They will not change without faith. And the faith comes as a result of the word. So it's, not our, it's, it's the law of faith that brings about the change, but really it's the faith that connects to the grace, and the grace is God's willingness to use his power on our behalf. So it really is by faith, but it's through grace. But without faith, you can't tap into the grace. And God's grace is sufficient. In what way? In that when you get the word on the inside of you and you speak it, God's grace is sufficient to deliver you from any situation. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Let us therefore, chapter 1, uh, verse, pardon me, Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. There is a promise and every promise that God has for us will change us into the image of his son. We are healed. Jesus bore that healing, for that, that paid the price for our healing. The promise that we are in Christ and Jesus bore that for us will change us into the image of Jesus. Was Jesus sick? We're not to be sick. Verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. When you hear the word of God preached, if you don't mix it with faith, it doesn't do you any good. But too often we hear the word, and we just hear it, okay, Sunday morning I heard this. And so then we go running out, and we start thinking, we can just start speaking to things, and then we don't see anything happen, and we wonder why, and we give up. Because you didn't have faith. Faith comes by revelation of the Holy Spirit. It's faith in the heart, not the head. And that's what we taught, the enemy within. Understanding the biggest thief, the biggest enemy of your faith is mental assent. And, and we taught on that. You should have a notebook where, okay, what's going to hinder my faith? And you heard the teaching on mental assent. Mental assent is this. So you look at that, and you're aware of that. So you don't just run off with mental assent, thinking you can release your faith and get what God has promised. Joshua was told to meditate in the word day and night, to be strong and courageous. Why? So then he might have good success. Then he would observe to do. And we think we can hear it once, run off, and maybe speak it, and it'll work. It doesn't work that way. There are laws to faith that will effect a change. And then when we walk that way, as we taught, avoid unbelief and a hardness of heart, we are relating more easily to the natural realm instead of God's divine realm, the supernatural. And we have to get to the place where we don't think natural, we only think divine. Jesus never thought natural. So we don't think natural. The word of God is not natural. The word of God is filled with the divine power of God. 
The word of God is Jesus. And if you think a word doesn't matter much or it's not important, you're really saying, uh, Jesus, you're not important. And that's pretty strong, but we sort of have, because I think in this country, the word has come so easily to us. We can go anywhere and get a Bible. And we've got it on our phone now and our computer and our iPads and, and, and. And we don't realize how valuable and precious the word of God is. We don't understand the power, the delivering power of the word. But when people have been in bondage and they get the word and they're delivered, they trade a page back and forth. One little book, The Authority of the Believer, brought down the Berlin Wall. When people believed it and spoke it. And God has that for every believer. There shouldn't be any walls in our life but that the word will bring down. Because faith affects the change in your life that you need. Nothing else will. So the mirror says, what a foolish thing it would be for us if we would now fail in a similar fashion to enter into the full consequences of our redemption. Find out what your redemption has. Full, full redemption. Completely, totally delivered from darkness. Completely, totally delivered from any work of the devil. Any work. We've been bought out, translated. We've been taken out of his kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. We've been put into the kingdom of light. No single person lacks the goods on the inside to get them over and get them everything that our redemption purchased. Our only problem is our head. We've got stinking thinking. And the minute our thinking doesn't line up with our redemption and what Jesus paid the price for, it's stinking. Because it's of the devil. And don't ever think, you know, people might be mean and nasty to you. You might have had a hard life. But don't ever think, well, I've had a hard life. People did this to me and people did that to me. And Satan will bring it back to your memory. Jesus paid the price of Jesus' blood for you. And you're no longer poor. You have the power of the living God in you. I read an interesting, just a little statement. I believe it was by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She says, every time you relive a memory of the past, it's never quite the same. It's never quite the same. The circumstances are different. Your emotions are different at this time. It makes you feel different. It makes it worse. Forget it. It'll damage your brain. Negative thinking damages the brain. And when that happens, we cannot exercise faith in what God says because we won't allow our thinking to get in line. It says the gospel that we have heard today is the same gospel that was preached in the promise. God had mankind in mind all along, yet because people lacked persuasion by which the word could be ignited and brought life to them, the promise did not profit them at all. We need to get to a place where we say, I am fully persuaded that what God has promised, he is able to perform. And I refuse to allow anything to stop me from getting what Jesus paid the price for. I don't care, it says, the righteous might fall seven times, but God picks them up every time. I can't go under but for going over. 
we have got to get a no failure mindset. And when we find it in the word of God, that's our word, that's for us today, and it's going to work on my life. And it doesn't matter how long I have to stand. Because in Ephesians it says, after having done all to stand, stand. I am not going to be moved off of the word of God. We have got to get to that place where nothing is going to push us off of the word of God. And the only thing that will push us off of the word of God is crazy thinking. Satan, we taught that identity theft. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see somebody that was abused? Do you see somebody that, that doesn't have an education? Do you see somebody that's beaten down? Do you see somebody that's poor? Do you see somebody that's sick? Do you see yourself black? Do you see yourself white? If you see yourself white in this country, you very easily might think, well, I'm white, so I guess I've got... Let me tell you, the most persecuted person in this country today is a Christian. And if you see yourself as black, you have limited yourself as far as the power of God because now you're looking at yourself in a physical realm instead of in your spirit. And in the spirit, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. We are one in Christ. And it doesn't matter what color your house is. And I'm really serious about that. Because those kind of things will stop the power of God. I, I, I'm not ta I don't care what kind of persecution's out there. They can't stop you because of your education, your color, your, your gender, or anything else. When you've got the power of Almighty God on the inside of you, you don't need anything else. When you know who you are in Christ, you don't need anything else. Hallelujah. So when you stand in the mirror, you point to that reflection and you call yourself who you are I'm a child of Almighty God I've got the life of God in me I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who redeemed me you get the scriptures on who you are in Christ I have the anointing on the inside of me and that's how faith comes you speak it, and you speak it, and you say, Holy Spirit, I ask you that you give me understanding of this, and you start reading your scripture. The eyes of my understanding are enlightened. We can pray that all the time. We speak that over ourselves all the time. Expect revelation, and the minute it gets in here, it will burst forth. But until it gets in here, that isn't faith. So we speak the word and we meditate the word, asking the Holy Spirit for revelation so it gets in here and faith comes and the change will come. You have to receive the word of God as a seed. Don't receive it as a word. Receive it as a word seed. That seed will go into, after speaking, it will get into your heart. Your heart will not be able to tell the seed what to produce. The seed tells the soil what nutrients it needs. The life is in the seed. The heart is the soil. And we can't become so people-minded, like self-minded, well, do I have this? Do I have that? Well, maybe this. Just take the word of the living God. It's full of power. And it will produce everything it said it will produce. Just plant it. Plant it. And how do you plant it? You say. 
You say, you say, you say, you say, and you're planting, and you're watering, and the word of God will choke out every wrong thing that's in there. It'll pull it all out, and it'll change your way of thinking. Remember Mary? Angel came to her. Mary, highly favored. How many are highly favored here today? Glory to God. You're highly favored. So today the Lord's coming to you, saying you're highly favored. So he said to Mary, you know, you're going to have this child. And she said, well, how's that going to work? He says, well, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and the word of God, the seed. She says, let it be according to your word. She took that seed, and it took on flesh, and it grew. But do you know what? Before she had any physical evidence, she went to Mary. I mean, she went to Elizabeth. Because she had faith when God said it. So whatever this word is, you go, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word pertaining to health and healing. Let it be to me according to your word regarding finances. And you take that word and you let it impregnate you. Every word of God is filled with his love because God is love. And the word became flesh. And Jesus is the exact image of the Father. So every word is filled with God's love. It's his love word. And love never fails. God gave us his word. You can't separate God and his word. Will God ever fail? Can God fail? then will his word fail any more than his love will fail. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, we have to change the way we think about it. We become so self-focused. Well, did I read enough word? Did I pray enough word? Did I speak enough word? Did I this enough? Did I, I, I? And we become so focused on ourselves. where it's a matter of praying, Holy Spirit. See, it shouldn't be a chore to read the word. When we realize that the word is Jesus, I mean, how many of us, if we heard that Jesus is down at the closest Tim Hortons, wherever it is, how many here, if this was announced, you heard it, or you've got your phone, you're taking notes or whatever, and a flash came. Jesus in the flesh is down at the closest Tim Hortons. While I'm speaking, I'm sure every one of you would get up and leave. Well, I might be the first one. We've got a more sure word of prophecy. We have the word. Jesus and his word are one. Jesus and his word are one. The minute I open the word and I start speaking that word, it's Jesus speaking to me. And he gave us the Holy Spirit who will reveal him to us. I don't have to wait in a long line at Tim Hortons to try and get to see Jesus, only to find out he had an appointment somewhere else. And he left, and I got left out, waiting until maybe the next time he came by. I've got him 24-7. I've got him 24-7. And you know, Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were sick. The word goes about today, doing good, healing all, when we receive it. When we receive it. The gospel was preached to them didn't do them any good. They didn't mix faith with it. We've got the gospel today. Is it doing us any good? Are we mixing it with faith? So every word of God is filled with his love, and his love never fails. 
The word of God produces an image on the inside of us and lets us know who we are. We've got to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. See yourself the way God sees you. I want to say that again. See yourself the way God sees you. That's big. He doesn't see you poor, afflicted, sick, ugly, no good, useless. He sees you in Christ. You are so valuable to him because he paid such a price. Jesus went to the cross for you. His blood was shed for you because you're valuable to him. You were born for such a time as this. He has a perfect plan and purpose for your life. Let the word paint that image on the inside of you so you will know who you are. Don't let outside negative forces try and put you down, telling you you can't. The only thing you can't do is something God didn't tell you to do. At this moment, he didn't tell me to go preach in Hawaii. If I go preach in Hawaii because I want to go there, I would not be a success other than in my own strength because God didn't tell me to go there. But whatever God asks you to do, he will give you the empowerment, the strength, the ability, the finances, the provision for the vision. He will give it to you all the time. All the time. See yourself the way God sees you. Find out what he says about you and spend enough time in the word until you get that image, not in here, but you get it from here to here with the help of the Holy Spirit. The words, words of God will root out whatever doesn't belong in there. You see, Joshua and Caleb saw them Themselves as conquerors, they said, we are well able because God has given us the land. We are well able because God has given us the land. We are well able because of Jesus. He's given us the land. He's given us the authority. The other ten said, no, we can't do it. We just see ourselves as grasshoppers. Make sure the way you see yourself is the way God sees you. Victorious. Limitless in his power. Glory to God. Don't have grasshopper faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then you get that on the inside of you. And that faith brings change. And it hooks into the grace of God. His favor. You didn't earn it. It's unmerited. His willingness to use his power on your behalf. It will kick in. And you won't know at this moment. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. What does that mean? In the natural realm, you have no way of knowing or seeing or understanding what God has planned for you. Get over in the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit show you what he's got planned for you. It's way beyond your natural mind can ever think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you may stand. Hallelujah.